Hello, my name is Neil Potter with Improving Your Small Business and today we'll discuss a simple and inexpensive barcode and inventory system. So we'll discuss in the video three different scenarios. Maybe one where nothing is organized. So uh, this person down here has a bunch of stuff. Could be small or large products, but there are no labels, nothing's organized, and they don't really have a good picture of what they have or what's coming in and what's kind of going out. Number two scenario, uh, this person here, they have boxes of stuff that are labeled, uh, but no clear picture of what they actually have on hand. And then number three, maybe you have a situation where you have a regular incoming and outgoing of items and they are labeled, uh, but no clear way to you know, track uh, what you have right now. Maybe things are done by email or by phone and no good way to kind of track track you know, what is incoming and what is kind of outgoing and therefore the total kind of list of things you have in the company. Then we'll discuss uh, designing uh, SKU codes. So if you want to build your own barcode system and barcodes, uh, we'll discuss how to do that simply in Excel. And then uh, barcode generation. So getting from the SKU code to a barcode, uh, we'll discuss how to do that. Then buying a scanner, a uh, spreadsheet to scan into and the track items. I'll go through a spreadsheet I put together and how you can obtain that, uh, that actually then uh, tracks kind of what you have in-house and what's kind of outgoing and incoming, and then options to kind of get started. So let's discuss this SKU system. A SKU is the stop keeping unit, basically a code you add to your product as an ID so you can recognize what you have and then count it and kind of track it. You can either use the the barcode on an existing product. We'll discuss how to do that. Or you could actually build your own. The benefit of having your own is you actually recognize you know, what the item is by the, the code you put together. So you could have a SKU uh, lettering system where you have the ID size and color, uh, like product number one, uh, BL for blue and L for large. Or you could have basically a big warehouse of shelves and racks. And it's the ID of the product the rack uh, letter, letter and the shelf number. So product number one, uh, rack A and shelf 15. Or maybe it's a SKU with a, a name of the product, uh, like beans, the ID uh, 15 and expiration date. So the upside about doing this is that you end up with a system that you can recognize yourself, you know, what you actually have and the, and the SKU number actually represents the particular item and the uniqueness of it. You'd have one SKU item for unique items. And so if we took that example there and end up with a prod one, uh, blue and large, that's our SKU identifier, we actually can uh, generate a barcode and the barcode format I've picked actually actually gives you the, uh, the SKU letters below the barcode. We'll discuss that in a couple of minutes. Now you might decide to use the barcodes that exist on the products already. Uh, the manufacturer will put a barcode on there or maybe the, the supplier with the packaging. And that may be unique enough for you to use and you just wanna use that and not have your own uh, barcodes uh, put together. So I have a can of beans here, already has a barcode on it. If I scan the barcode, um, you see on my screen, my scanner then picked up the barcode and gave me the number. Now I could in my database define that as a can of beans and therefore every time I scan that particular item, I get a can of beans as my definition. So you could decide to use all of the barcodes on existing products uh, as they are, and then just kind of define what they are in a database. And I'll show you that in a couple of seconds, and then you're kind of good to go. So the only upside really of having your own SKU is that you recognize yourself, you know, the particular item, the kind of size of it, whatever, and you can pick it up uh, very easily and then refer to it. If you use a barcode by the manufacturer, you're then mapping their random number to you, random, back to your own definition and then recognizing kind of what it is. If you decide on the approach to build your own barcodes with your own SKU system, uh, that is quite doable. Uh, take an example in Excel. Here we have uh, column A and column B in Excel and row number one. And then I type in my SKU uh, value here, my code I put together or paste it in from another file. And then uh, column C, uh, the value of this uh, cell here is equal to uh, column A1 uh, with the parenthesis and the ampersand uh, before and after. And that converts it in Excel to a barcode. The second thing we have to do is give it a font. So actually the barcode symbol is generated by a font. So it's with the combination of the code here, 
uh, referenced and the font type. I went to a um, uh, this website here. I picked out by for free a font called ID Automation H39 39M. And so uh, you open that file, you double click on it, it kind of installs, you quit Excel, go back into Excel, and therefore the font should show up in your font list. And if I then make this a font equal to that one I then selected, uh, then I get a barcode. Now this ID Automation one, uh, will then give you the SKU letters below the barcode. Some give you the SKU letters below the barcode, other ones kind of don't. There's four, five, six to kind of choose from, uh, different styles. I like this one, it works just kind of fine. So what we're doing is telling Excel, take the value we typed in, <coughs> uh, take the code to convert it to a barcode, give it a barcode font, and end up with a barcode. So if you have you know 20 barcodes to do, uh, that is five rows of two columns, uh, that is one uh, kind of a label sheet, and therefore you can then you know, type in the 20 barcodes and then end up with a, a final sheet. Now to make it work in Excel and print it off as a label, uh, we're going to use the Avery 5161 sheet, a pretty standard uh, labeling sheet thing you can buy from Amazon or kind of a Walmart or somewhere. And then I've put given my uh, screen capture down here of the dimensions of that sheet, kind of make it fit correctly. So we have a custom margin here, because it's a very narrow, skinny margins in a Avery sheet. And I put the values of my margins up here on the other sheet. And then to make the Excel page gonna lay out correctly, you know, 20 items per page, uh, we set the row height to be 95, the column width to be 50, and we have a maximum of 10 rows and two columns scheme. And so those dimensions work for me on my Excel, play with them. You may have to go plus or minus that uh, to make it work for you. You actually can get a Avery PDF template to kind of lay out and kind of just make they see they fit. I'll put a link to the template down, down below. So if you want to go play with that, uh, you can make sure the labels would fit the label sheet before you then go waste time on the labels. So all of this does actually work in Google Sheets. If you're a Google kind of person, uh, you basically import the Excel spreadsheet into Google Sheets and will then build a sheet for you. Uh, but the only difference is you have to replace these parens, okay, here with asterisks or stars, okay, and then choose a different font, one that's built into Google Sheets. So uh, Libre Barcode 39 Text is a font I found in uh, Google Sheets by default. I picked that one. I uh, changed the size to be 20. Actually, 20 or 30 works just fine to make the, the, the barcode big enough to see and print. And then make sure you have good formatting so you're vertically centered in a cell and uh, within the uh, top and bottom uh, part of it vertically. And then it kind of works just fine. And so then you select the row of cells to go print. Google Sheets will then print a PDF for you, we'll make a PDF for you, and you're going to print that. So you can actually can do this pretty well in Google Sheets as well as Excel. Now, in terms of a scanner, uh, there's a zillion scanners out there. Just go to Amazon or some place like that, and you'll find a zillion scanners. They're all about $50 to $70, now plus or minus. Uh, the one I selected uh, was by Inatech. It's a 2D scanner. So a 1D scanner is a barcode, one dimension, and a 2D scanner is for a QR code, uh, kind of two dimensions, like a square. I picked one that did both, uh, because although we're not doing QR codes right now, I wanted the ability to scan QR codes. You may actually have products uh, that you get from elsewhere that actually have QR codes on them, and therefore your scanner would better deal with that and deal with the uh, barcode. So look for the 2D one. Uh, this I have just kind of found very small, kind of handy, pocket size, versus kind of one of these bigger ones, but they all work the same kind of way. Uh, this uh, connects Bluetooth to a laptop or a, a phone or a, a tablet. I did not need to use the Bluetooth connector because my devices already have Bluetooth, uh, but you can do it wired too, if you want to do it wired. Uh, not much difference either way. Um, so I picked a Bluetooth one. Actually, I've played this for quite a while now, uh, several months. I actually like it a lot, kind of very small and kind of handy. But any of these or the zillions of ones in Amazon uh, that go along with that, I think all they're just all fine to, to kind of play with. Let's take a look at a spreadsheet that I use to scan things into. I kind of built this, um, and you can uh, play with the ideas. Now, you might have a situation where one person in the company is the scanning person, because you don't want to ha have people overwrite the data. And therefore, if you go to an Excel, 
or Google Sheets too, uh, there's a share button up here and you can actually share the data with other people. So you could take an Excel spreadsheet, uh, give permissions to one person to edit it so you don't overwrite data uh, incorrectly and then share it and then provide everybody with a link to the shareable version. It becomes kind of like a web page format at that point. And then as the editor adds things and deletes things, everybody else on their device can see it. So you could have one laptop in a warehouse or a, a kind of a room where things are being scanned, input and output, but all of the devices around the building uh, have a shared copy of it and they can see as you edit it kind of what's happening. So you don't have to have many spreadsheets running I'm going to try and sync them together, that would be a disaster. You can actually use the share button to then broadcast that spreadsheet to other people. And you can change the permissions, you know, have more people edit it, but you have to be careful with that, you know, about uh, permissions. Uh, or have one person have the permissions by the, the person with the scanner, the person with the laptop, and everybody else can have a read only, only copy to go look at. Let's take a look at the uh, spreadsheet. So in the spreadsheet, the first table is the definition of items. Okay. Um, and so I put in the SKU numbers um, and I define what they were and I put in their cost. So yellow items are basically input to you. You input them to the database and then the white or the other ones are calculated or looked up uh, by the system. So we're going to define every SKU item one time in the first uh, table. Now, if we want to use the barcode system on the can of beans and not our own, uh, basically we can put a cursor in that blank cell there. We can scan the can of beans and we get the number into Excel. We can then define what that is. We don't remember what that number is, uh, but can of beans. <clears throat> and then every time we scan an item that is that number, we're going to get a can of beans shop in our inventory. So again, you could use your own system or you could use the existing system. And then to make look up a little easier for you to figure out what it is, you can then define the item one time in the first table. Now the second table is for incoming. So the idea here is to make incoming scan scanning go quickly. So if you have a bunch of things to you've purchased when coming to the store or your business and you want to scan them quickly, again you can take the, the uh, cell here, uh, the column K. I have my bunch of labels. I print it off. Imagine they're stuck to a, a particular item as a label and I can then scan them either upside down or the correct way up. And as I scan, uh, they basically fill up the cell correctly. And because I defined them beforehand, uh, they show up in the description column in column L. And because I define the cost, uh, the cost of that scan comes into, you know, how many items and one item and the total value of it. Now, if you have, um, you see all the numbers here are one. So to make scanning go quick, I put a default uh, quantity of one. But if you want to overwrite that with 10 or 15 or 20, because uh, you have a box of them, you can then overwrite that number too. But I built it kind of so you can scan quickly. So as you scan, uh, the cursor goes to the, down to the next row correctly or automatically, and therefore you're going to keep on scanning correctly. And as long as you have them defined in the database, uh, you're going to be good to go. Now, if I happen to not have the can of beans defined in my system, but I'm scanning cans of beans, uh, let's remove it out of my definition here. And I go to my input. So I, I received a bunch of items cans of beans, whatever, and I scan the item over here, it will scan the item and then tell me that I was not defined in my list. So there's a mismatch between what I'm scanning and what I thought I had in my list. Now, if I happen to go put that into the system, I can scan it there or paste it there and say can of beans, okay. put it back in there. Um, you don't have to spell it correctly, it's just the can of beans. Okay. There we go. Uh, then is going to then update my definition over here uh, that I scanned in a can of beans. Again, if I scan more than one can, or more than one item, I could put 20 in there and I get a correct number. Okay. And then I put my price in there if I want to put a price in there, $6, and then my reorder kind of level. Okay. So uh, you basically, map, it tells you as you go if you are mismatching between what you're scanning and what you have defined uh, before. Now to make output easy, I had to find an output list too. And so again, you can, as you sell things or get rid of things, or they kind of move out of the business because you're going to rent them out or they're going to leave the building. Again, you can go to the barcode, you can scan it. Every time you scan, you're going to get a minus one. Again, if you're scanning a box of things and there's 20 of them, you can put minus 20 in there. Uh, but the idea is you scan quickly, it then does a return on the keyboard automatically 
and then you can keep on going with your uh, output. Now, if I happen to scan and there's not enough items in inventory, and so right now I have 20 cans of beans, uh, but I go over here and I scan uh, uh, beans, <clears throat> and I put minus 20 in there, uh, then it tells me my inventory is now going to zero. If I basically go to uh, 21 beans, minus 21 beans, okay, cans of beans, it will then say it um, goes red again, and my inventory is going to minus one. So it's going to give you a little flag there to tell you, you know, you're overly scanning things that you don't actually have in stock, and therefore you should go work on that before you then ship that particular item out. On the top of the spreadsheet, we have a diagram that kind of shows you the final count over here. And if you, I corrected my scan of beans to minus one versus minus 20. So it went down to 19 over here. Uh, but as you then either add things or you delete things, uh, the list in the uh, x-axis here will kind of change as you then change the skew code scheme. And so it's just a quick way to visually see the table below and figure out kind of what you have uh, in stock. In the tab to the right, we have our barcode generation. So I put our SKU codes over here. Again, there's 20 of them in the page. And then uh, we calculate the barcode over here with the correct font number and that calculation puts in there. And because there's 20 items on this Avery uh, label sheet, we can then pick out this section here and then print it. I set my uh, row height to be 95 and my column width to be 20, 50. And we have you know, five, two columns and five rows. And therefore, with that set and the margin set correctly, and the margin values are down here, we can then print a sheet of labels. If you have five pages of labels or 100 labels, you keep on adding to the list below in the, the column, and then you select that, that, that range, and it will give you five uh, pieces of paper or label sheets uh, with those barcodes. So a couple of options to get started. Uh, you can build your own spreadsheet. I think out of the data in the uh, video, you should better make your own, or if you're Excel familiar. Um, otherwise, you could decide to buy it. It's $49 for the spreadsheet in Excel, and then you can uh, play with the uh, Google Sheets if you want to do that. If you need time to or assistance to kind of get started, how to label things, what the code should be, build in the barcode, that kind of stuff, whatever, uh, then 1 to 49 gives you the spreadsheet and an hour of help from me. We're going to do a Zoom call, a Teams call, and figure out kind of what you're uh, have going on. My goal is to kind of get you self-sufficient quickly. You know, an hour may do it. If you need a bit more assistance because you're a bit more in a mess or a bit less familiar with uh, spreadsheets and whatever, and then we can do 249, gives you the spreadsheet and two hours of assistance scheme. Again, I'll help you out. It could be two one hours or four half hours, you know, pick and choose whatever, whatever you like. Uh, the link for this is at the inventory link under my website. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe and make some nice comment down below. Um, if you want to see things like this, on the left we have how to increase sales in a small business, uh, things I learned about selling. And then on the right hand side we have uh, tracking customer requests. Thank you. Bye-bye.